Welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm Donovan Brown. Today we're going to be talking about delivery plans with Elliot. Elliot, welcome to the show. Thanks, Donovan. So tell me, what do you do on uh, the Visual Studio Team Services team? Sure, so I work on Visual Studio Team Services and TFS, and in that team we work on the Agile group. So that's everything that looks after work item tracking, such your Kanban boards, your backlogs, your queries. And obviously our delivery plans. You've got it. So right. delivery plans, if I understand it correctly, it's an extension that we can add to Team Services today, right? That's right, yeah. So it came live in the extension marketplace a couple of weeks ago, and we're in public pre View, which means it's free for use at the moment. We're really looking to get usage and get a ton of feedback on how we want to make a great experience. All right, so let's show, show me how it works. Great, thanks. So what you're looking at here is actually a delivery plan itself. And the purpose of the delivery plan is to view work across multiple teams. And we're answering one key question, which is really when is the work going to be delivered? Okay. So taking you through the view you can see here, you can see at the top we have this calendar element. And this is a normalized calendar element. So you can see today is the 9th of February and we've got this today marker which is clearly highlighting where we are in the calendar. And then below that we have our team rows. And so what you're looking for here is this is the work that each team has scheduled in their sprints. Okay. So for example in this team row here, team one, we're seeing the features that that team are going to be delivering. Their current sprint is sprint 49. It started on the 30th of January and it's going to finish on the 11th of February. Okay. And it's very easy to see then that this team are delivering two features in that sprint. There's a spike UX for Project X, it's assigned to Thomas, okay. and then there's this login page they're going to be delivering. Okay. And then moving through the view, we're seeing a completely separate team here, so it's team two. And there, this is rolled up at the moment, so you're seeing just glance information of two features. Okay. And if we expand that again, then we see the work team two are going to be delivering, which gotcha. is this auto-update and this web app security. So I noticed that the teams don't have to be running at the same cadence in this view here, right? So this is going to help synchronize and coordinate their deliveries? Exactly, that's right. Like a, a, a key principle we have is that, you know, teams, whilst it's beneficial to have them aligned on a sprint schedule, they don't have to in an Agile context. So you want to give them the autonomy to choose their own sprint schedule. So this way, we're going to view them, all of the sprint schedules, against this normalized timeline. So it's easy to tell then when all of the work is going to be completed by a certain date. Gotcha. So these sprints, are these tied to iterations or areas of my team project? Exactly, that's right, yes. Okay. So you set up the iterations in your admin section and the teams will opt into those iterations. They say, so for example, team one is working this sprint 49, 50, 51. Team two is on sprint A, B, and C. And then they will assign the work into that iteration in the work item form. So let me show you an example. Sure. We can see in sprint 50, there's this build settings experience. It's actually assigned to me at the moment. And we can load that up and then in the form, we're seeing then that the iteration is Sprint 50. Gotcha. And then you can go into the form, make your edits, and, and update it in real time. Gotcha. And then that takes us on to uh, another uh, use for this uh, view, which is all about being able to adapt in real time the, the plan of record. So for example, if this build settings experience, and perhaps we're having a conversation that it's not required at that time, or we don't have the resources to maybe deliver it in that time, then it's really easy in this view to just quickly pick it, drag it and drop it into the next sprint. Oh, I got and you. we drop it and there we are. We've rescheduled the view and it really is the now single version of the truth that all the teams can follow. Great. So if I were to go back to my, if I were to find this work item in any other view, the, the Kanban yeah. board, the backlog, or maybe inside of my IDE, yeah. I would now see that the iteration has been changed to Sprint 51, right? You've got it. Exactly gotcha. that. That's and then right. if I were to make any of those changes to the iteration in any of those other places and then come back here, I would see that also reflected Again, on this view. Always aligned. That's right. Gotcha. So, and, and you can see here then the card we have here, which is very similar to our Kanban cards. I'm just showing the title and the assignee here. And that's the important information I feel is relevant. But we can uh, configure this as well. So for example, we can go into our settings experience and then tailor these cards to add additional fields, whether gotcha. it be tags we care about or perhaps the state that's being shown. So okay. what we're trying to give is a very flexible canvas here for people to sh have the information that they care about most. Okay, and so at what level of item will show up on this, this delivery plan, will bug show up here as well as user stories and product backlog items? And I'm assuming task would not show up on a board like this one. That's right. Well, you can actually view tasks on the board if you okay. like. We give, we give the flexibility for the creator to, to choose. So uh, if we go to this bottom team, team three, instead of seeing the features that you can oh, see in I teams see. one and two, now we're seeing stories and bugs. Interesting. And so from that perspective, it's easy to see then that you can see there's some dummy data here, but there's the you know the bug counts they have, and then the user stories aside those again with the same functionality to move back and forth. So fantastic. So do you guys actually use this on your own teams? Yeah, absolutely. So this is where it really spawned from the 
you know, we have a, a large organization who's, you know, continually delivering to our hosted service every sprint and keeping all those teams aligned is challenging. And so the way we do it is we, we approach it in, a, in an agile way in terms of, you know, we have a prioritized backlog and we pull the work in per team, but yet we need to actually look ahead of ourselves to make sure that we're, we're planning to resolve dependencies ahead of time right. so that we don't meet those challenges directly in Sprint. We can be a little bit more scheduled about our work approach really. Okay. So internally we have something called a three Sprint plan meeting where all of the teams who are kind of related to each other will, will work together to build a delivery plan like this, talking about what they're going to deliver, what resources are going to be on that piece? Right. Is there any emergent work that we weren't prepared for previously? Okay. And we used to do that in a one-note document, just very, you know, <laughs> type and touch. And, sure. and the, you know, the ironic thing was we had all the data in the system. So gotcha. what we did, this, this is why we built this view. We can take the work item tracking data we have and the Kanban board flexibility, and we really merge the two to kind of drive that meeting and make it very useful. I see, I see. So. There's different views, like for example, a task board is normally used by your developers, a Kanban board is normally used by your project management or your product owner. Who do you see being the target audience for a delivery plan? Great. Okay, so I think it's about cross-team view. So uh, program managers or product owners who okay. care about multiple teams, I think that's important. Engineering leads who care about the work their team are going to deliver and perhaps are dependent on other teams, gotcha. I think that view is going to be valuable as well. Um, so I'm, we're hoping to make it you know, broad for a lot of people in, in the organization. And that's, that's why we added the, the, the ability to customize the card. So for example, for me, the data you're seeing there about title of the card and assignee and state matters to me. But for someone else, maybe they want more of a list view. So something simple as just pressing the T shortcut key, then okay. removes all those fields and just makes it in a list view, which is hopefully more digestible. Gotcha. And I've noticed there's a scale uh, up in the right-hand corner. What does adjusting the scale do for me? You've got it. So that actually, that will uh, shorten and lengthen the, the, the length of time on the calendar. So you can see I that see. we can zoom all the way out, and all of a sudden we're seeing like a very high multi-month view. Whereas if then teams were perhaps having one week iterations, then we're going to scale all the way in and we're going to be able to then view that, that the card details much closer. So that's the purpose of the scale there. Is there any ability on this screen, because uh, I know we can do it on others, but I don't see it offhand, where I can add a new item to this particular screen? Not yet. No, that's a, that's a really great suggestion. And, and that's part of the reason we're in public preview now. You know, okay. we, 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 Belief, we've brought an experience where you can view work across teams, but we want to add dependency tracking into this. We want the ability to filter this more personally and add items and bring items from your backlog. And, and that's really where we're looking for a ton of feedback from our users. And okay. you know, we'd encourage people to go to user voice and, okay. and give us these great suggestions because they really affect how we're going to keep you know, enhancing this process. So what's the URL for user voice that someone would go to? Yeah, if let me, to help let me flick to this as well. So it's, uh, it's visualstudio.uservoice.com. Okay. And then if you place any of your ideas, under delivery plans, then that's going to basically come through straight to me and we're going to get it on that backlog and right. deliver it. All right, perfect. Well, thank you so much for showing us this. And uh, I think a lot of people are going to be excited to be able to see across their teams because one of the things that you said that kind of jumped out at me and I get this a lot from customers is how can we coordinate our dependencies upon other people? Now, I know that our Visual Studio Team Services team is kind of unique because I noticed you could run at different cadences, but we don't, right? That's I mean, right. All, yeah. what, there are 39 teams of us now? Yes. Yeah, actually run at a three-week cadence, but it does not mean that one team doesn't still depend on another team. Yes. So how would that, like, how would I be able, or how are you envisioning mm. to be able to determine that this item here depends on them completing some other item? Yeah, I think it's, uh, the vision we have for it is, is probably something very simplistic, like we want to, we want to show that the dependency exists between two items, and then I think we want to show something related to the health of the dependency. So not only that, taking this example here, perhaps that um, the uh, delivery service hooks feature is also dependent on the delivery of this security module, okay. but also that the current scheduling here is a fairly healthy scheduling. They're both scheduled aside each other. It would be better if the dependent item, let's say you need to deliver the hooks first, before you deliver the module. This would be a more healthy scheduling. Like we know this delivery hooks is gonna be delivered at this point and then Team D can pick it up. I see. And I think what we want to alert is that if the dependency is unhealthy, so if you know the dependent is scheduled beforehand, let's make that red, let's make it bold, let's inform the user that they need to action something there. So that's our vision for, for dependencies. Well, this is really exciting stuff. And I know a lot of customers have been asking for this, not only internally, because we obviously needed it ourselves. And I think it's really neat that we're a really good example of a highly functioning Scrum team who delivers yeah. 
39 different teams worth of work every three weeks like clockwork and we needed this and yes. there's a lot of other companies out there who also need views like this so thank you so much for coming to the show and sharing uh, delivery plans with us great thank you very much thank you so much for watching guys